This is Dimitri Lascaris reporting for the Real News Network from Montreal, Canada. For years, the fracking boom has sparked a debate about the role that drilling for oil and natural gas in U.S. shale bedrocks plays in worsening the global climate crisis. Now, a new scientific study says that perhaps things are not as bad as they seem, or are they? It depends on who you ask. Conducted by the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NOAA, the study published in the journal Geophysical Research Letters concludes that methane emissions measured at 20 different oil and natural gas drilling sites showed that between 2016, 2006 and 2015, methane emissions rose 3.4% or about 3 million tons more annual emissions in 2015 compared to 2006. By way of comparison, a collection of studies organized by the Environmental Defense Fund have shown an increase of over 16 million tons more annual emissions compared to 2006 levels. So that's quite a discrepancy. Further, just two weeks after the release of the NOAA study, a Cornell University study done in partnership with Environmental Defense Fund concluded that methane emissions from ammonia fertilizer plants are 100 times higher than industry estimates and three times higher than EPA estimates for all industry methane emissions in the United States combined. Here to break down and explain these scientific discrepancies is Benjamin Poulter. Benjamin is a research scientist at the NASA Goddard Space Flight Center and an adjunct professor at the University of Maryland. His research focuses on drivers of climate change, including deforestation, methane emissions from tropical wetlands, and the connection between land use patterns and climate change. Thank you for joining us today, Ben. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. So it's probably prudent to start out with the politics of the uh, NOAA methane study and how it has played so far. The fossil fuels industry's most powerful lobbying group, the American Petroleum, Petroleum Institute, predictably has celebrated this. It wrote that these are, quote, significant findings and clearly show advances in our industry's ability to capture increasing amounts of methane during a period of record-breaking domestic natural gas production. A policy analyst for the Heartland Institute, which has historically received funding from the fossil fuel industry and denies climate change, went further. He wrote, air quality in the United States has reached a point where new regulations or tighter standards are no longer necessary. Now, what do you make of these conclusions as a scientist? What does the study actually show? And what are the, some of the big takeaways of the latest climate science of methane emis emissions from the US oil and gas industry? Well, globally, methane uh, concentrations in the atmosphere are about 150% above uh, pre-industrial conditions. So over the last 200 years, methane has increased from uh, roughly 700 parts per billion uh, to around 1,850 parts per billion. Um, and methane is a particularly complex greenhouse gas uh, for us to understand, given the multiple sources that methane uh, is emitted from. And these include uh, fossil fuel-related activities from oil and gas exploration uh, from wetlands and also from the agricultural sector. Uh, what we've seen since uh, 2007 is uh, a very surprising growth in uh, the atmospheric methane concentrations, uh, which increased again in uh, 2014. And uh, there's a lot of research being done, like the study uh, conducted by NOAA, to actually understand whether the, uh, the sources of emissions are coming from oil and gas, whether they're coming from wetlands, or whether they're coming from the agricultural sector. Oil and gas emissions uh, account for roughly 30 to 40 percent of the total emissions of methane uh, that, um, that, that are being produced today. And so there's a lot of opportunities still for mitigation in this sector. And the agricultural sector accounts for how much of uh, methane emissions? Uh, and agriculture accounts for roughly uh, 30 percent. So it's about 30, 35 percent of methane emissions come from oil and gas. 30, 35 percent come from agriculture. This includes uh, livestock. Uh, the burping of cows uh, is, is, is a source of methane, uh, as well as from uh, rice cultivation and uh, the, the treatment of, um, of manure uh, from, from livestock uh, practices. And then the remainder, about 40 percent of methane, uh, is emitted from wetlands. Now, Environmental Defense Fund said the study had sound science, but also said it raises questions because it, quote, does not address the magnitude of emissions, but only focuses on the trend in emissions that can be estimated directly from atmospheric observations. Instead, the organization said that many data sources are needed to analyze methane emissions, 
what are some of the shortcomings of using stationary air measurement sources to collect data on climate change when we're talking about something like methane, a, a greenhouse gas dozens of times more potent than carbon dioxide during its first decades in the atmosphere? And for that matter, what are the strengths of the methodology that was used? So the, the, uh, one of the challenges with, with oil and gas activities is that there are hundreds of wells that are um, uh, being used or being developed uh, for extracting methane through fracking practices. And uh, only a small percentage, maybe uh, on the order of 1% to 5% of those wells, are producing uh, maybe more than 50% of the methane that's leaking from these uh, activities. And so we have this issue of super emitters and being able to uh, detect efficiently uh, those super emitters. Perimeters. Uh, air, air, airplane campaigns are one way to uh, uh, to cover large areas, uh, but but still, there's there's so many um, uh, activities taking place that it's it's challenging for these aircraft uh, campaigns to to comprehensively survey these um, uh, all, all the oil and gas fields. Um, and to detect these super emitters. And so remote sensing is starting to play a role uh, in terms of uh, covering uh, more kind of water wall uh, uh, and, and getting a larger picture of where these super emitters might be uh, located. Uh, but there, there's still a lot of work to be done in this area. So it sounds as though you think that environmental defense funds critique has some merit. Uh, there, there's, uh, it's, it's a very intensive practice to actually detect which of these wells are, are the, the super emitters. And, um, uh, and, and so there's, there's still a lot of work to be done in this area, yeah. Okay. So how much of all this is, a, is an issue of the ability to get the even get the data itself from production sites? For example, Environmental Defense Fund was criticized for their first landmark climate change and methane emissions study back in 2013 for being allowed onto the production sites of fracking companies on days of the company's choosing. Doing so, said critics, made it a non-random sample and perhaps a day when drillers cleaned up its act. The industry does not just give away this data, uh, particularly if it would make the industry look bad. What problems does that present in terms of getting the data and really understanding the full scope of the issue? Uh, there, there's a lot of um, the, 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 the leakage from the oil and gas practices. There's a lot of uh, kind of temporally varying uh, emissions. And so day to day, there might be different rates of, of methane that are being uh, leaked from these activities. Uh, so having long term monitoring uh, and again, trying to cover uh, these really expansive uh, landscapes that are um, being used for oil and gas extraction activities is, is critical. Um, and uh, having, I think the study highlights the need uh, to be able to uh, have a multi-tiered approach to uh, detecting where these leaks might be taking place. So for example, uh, having in situ monitoring at the, at the, um, at the site level, uh, but then scaling this up using a combination of aircraft, aircraft campaigns, uh, as well as using uh, satellite observations and, uh, and combining these measurements to uh, have a, a long-term uh, sampling strategy and monitoring strategy to try to reduce these uncertainties. And, and finally, Ben, uh, what are some concrete steps, steps you think governments and regulatory agencies can take to curb methane emissions? Is it safe to conclude that a rapid phase out of drilling for these methane emitting sources is needed, given the rather alarming state of the broader climate science? Uh, well, I would leave that question up to the to the policymakers and uh, um, have them uh, make the decisions about uh, what practices would be appropriate for the energy sector. Well, we've been speaking to Dr. Ben Poulter about a new study relating to methane emissions. Thank you very much for joining us today, Ben. Okay, thank you for having me. And this is Dimitri Lascaris reporting for the Real News Network.